Hi everyone, I'm Nadia Chukurko from MIT, and today I will be talking about weighted maximum independent set of geometric objects in turnstile streams. This is a joint work with Anish Bakshi and David Woodruff from CMU. Let me set the stage with a brief outline for this talk. I will start with the problem setup and motivation for studying this problem. Then, I will talk about what is known in the offline setting, followed by our result in the streaming setting. Subsequently, Einish will take over and provide an overview of our techniques and conclude with some open questions and future work. All right, so let us start with defining the maximum independent set problem. Here, we are given as input a graph G on N vertices, and the goal is to compute the largest subset of vertices that are pairwise disjoint, meaning there are no edges between any two vertices in this set. In our two example, the maximum independent set is these four shaded nodes. Recall, MIS is notoriously hard to approximate on general graphs. In particular, Hested in 96 showed that approximating maximum independent set within a factor of n to the 1 minus epsilon for any constant epsilon isn't p hard. Let's consider a natural generalization of this problem, where each vertex now has a non-negative weight associated with it. The goal is then to find the largest weighted independent set. Observe, for a fixed graph topology, the weighting might drastically change the maximum independent set, as evidenced by the above example. In light of strong hardness of approximation result, we saw for general graphs. In this work, we focus on special case of MIS of geometric objects. For instance, we are given a set of n disks in the plane, and our goal is to now find the largest set of disks that are pairwise disjoint. Interestingly, the computational complexity now varies based on geometric object we consider. MIS of intervals and disks is well understood in the offline setting, meaning the RAM model. Next, we give a brief overview of this work. We begin with the computational complexity of intervals. MIS of intervals can be computed exactly in polynomial time using a simple algorithm. We simply greedily pick intervals from left to right according to whichever interval finished first, and it's not too hard to see that this algorithm is optimal. In our toy example, the algorithm proceeds by selecting this interval, then discarding all intervals intersecting with it, then selecting this interval, and so on. Further, the weighted maximum independent set problem can also be computed exactly in polynomial time using dynamic programming. This algorithm appears as a canonical example for dynamic programming in several undergraduate textbooks. Switching gears, we now consider disks in the plane. A theorem of Clark, Colburn, and Johnson from 1990 shows that MIS of unit disks is on p-hard. Further, this hardness extends to several other geometric objects in the plane, such as squares and line segments. However, in 2012, Chan and Har Pilot obtained a PTAS for disks. Their result and subsequent work extends to other fed objects like squares. In our work, we focus on studying MIS in the streaming model. Here, each object arrives one at a time. And we have polylogarithmic in N working memory. As we see here, we cannot store the entire input in memory. Further, the MIS itself may be very large, making our task impossible. Instead, we relax our goal and focus on outputting the cardinality of MIS, which is just a number between 1 and n, 
and can be represented with log and bits. For the remainder of the talk, we shall focus on objects with unit lengths and radius. Our paper also includes results for arbitrary length intervals, which we shall not get to in this talk. We begin by considering insertion only streams. Here, objects once inserted are not deleted subsequently. Unweighted maximum independent set was studied for intervals and insertion only streams by Cabello and Perez Lantero. They provide a three half approximation in poly n space. Perhaps surprisingly, they show that computing even a slightly better approximation requires essentially storing the entire input. Our first contribution is to extend their result to the weighted setting, and we show we can obtain a three half approximation even for this generalization of the problem. Next, we consider turnstile streams. Here, an object may be deleted from the stream once it has been inserted. To the best of our knowledge, maximum independent set of geometric objects was not considered in turnstile streams prior to our work. We show that we can obtain a two approximation for estimating the weighted MIS. Further, we show that this is tight and any better approximation requires omega n space. We summarize our results and comparison with prior work in this table. We present two key takeaways from our results. Firstly, we obtain an unexpected strict separation between insertion only and turnstile streams for interval selection. Second, the optimal approximation ratio remains the same for the weighted version of the MIS problem. Finally, we show an approximation ratio of 8 square root 3 over pi for disks in turnstile streams. We describe where this constant appears from and connection to sphere packing later in the talk. We note that no better lower bound than a two approximation is known for this problem. Recall the two approximations simply follows from the hardness of 1D intervals. I will now hand over the remainder of the talk to Einish. All right, uh, thank you, Nadia. For the second half of this talk, I will describe uh, the key technical challenges that go into designing our algorithms and lower bounds. Let's begin with a warm up algorithm that obtains a two approximation for unit weight intervals. Consider a grid delta or side left one and shift this grid randomly. Then partition each cell in the grid into odd and even cells as follows. As intervals arrive, we snap each interval to one cell in the grid that contains the center of the interval. Note, since we randomly shifted the grid, there is a unique cell for each interval with probability 1. We then output the maximum number of non-empty cells between the odd and even cells as our estimate to the maximum independent set. Observe, no two intervals that lie in distinct odd cells can intersect, and intervals lying in the same cell must always intersect. Therefore, it suffices to compute the L0 norm of the odd and even cells separately. This yields a two approximation. Okay, so the only question now is how to implement L0 estimation in streams. L0 estimation is a well-studied problem and uh, Kane, Nelson and Woodruff in 2010 showed that for any vector v, we can obtain a 1 plus epsilon approximation to the L0 norm of V in poly log n over epsilon space. Combined with the analysis we showed on the previous slide, this yields a 2 approximation in turnstile streams. 
However, it is not immediately clear how to extend this approach to handle weighted intervals. All right. So let's start with the weaker goal of obtaining a nine approximation for weighted intervals and refine it subsequently. We again consider a grid of side length one over the real line and shift it randomly. We then partition the grid into odd and even sets. Recall from our previous discussion, it, fo it suffices to focus on the MIS restricted to the odd cells. We now further partition each cell into polylogarithmically many geometrically increasing weight classes. The ith weight class captures intervals with weight in, in, in the range 1.5 to the i and 1.5 to the i plus 1. We then create a new substream for each weight class as seen here. Upon seeing a new interval, with weight w, we insert it into the corresponding substring. We then run L0 estimation on each substring independently. Let T sub i denote the estimate for the L0 norm of the ith substream at the end of the stream. We simply output summation over i 1.5 to the i plus 1 times T sub i as our final estimator. Note that it is clear from our previous discussion that we can implement this algorithm in a dense style stream. So let's analyze it. Observe, for a particular interval, we round up its weight by a factor of at most three halves. Further, for a particular cell that is non empty, ideally, they would like to pick the maximum weight interval snapping to this cell. A priori, we do not know which weight class contains the max weight interval, and thus we use the sum of the geometrically increasing weights as our proxy. In the worst case, each weight class could be non empty, and this yields an additional factor of 3. Overall, we obtain a 9 halves approximation to the weighted MIS contained in the odd cells. We can then repeat this analysis with the even cells and output the maximum of the two estimators. This results in an overall 9 approximation. Alright, now I'll outline how to obtain a 2 approximation for weighted intervals. We begin by refining our estimator to instead obtain a 1 plus epsilon approximation with the weighted MIS restricted to the odd cells. Once we can do this, we obtain a 2 approximation overall. We begin by partitioning each cell into finer geometrically increasing weight classes. We then agnostically subsample cells at the beginning of the stream at various sampling rates. To do this, we want to we do this to approximate sampling non-empty cells in each weight class. We then use sparse recovery to obtain accurate estimates of the non-empty cells. Finally, we use our nine approximation, which we developed previously, to determine which agnostic subsampling rate worked out at the end of the stream. For more details on how to put these techniques together, we recommend looking at the full version of our paper. Next, I'll discuss uh, the techniques we use to prove our hardness of approximation result. It follows from a straightforward reduction from the augmented indexing problem. Recall, augmented indexing is a communication problem between two players, Alice and Bob. Alice receives as input an n-dimensional bit vector x, and Bob receives as input an index i along with the prefix of Alice's input vector x up to the ith bit. 
Bob's goal is to then compute the value of the ith bit in Alice's input. The communication is restricted to only Alice sending messages to Bob. One naive strategy to solve this problem is for Alice to communicate her entire input to Bob. The result of Miltesser, Nissan, Safra, and Vigdesen show that this is indeed the best that Alice can do, and every potentially randomized protocol also requires omega n communication. Given this result, our reduction proceeds as follows. Alice creates a stream of intervals based on her input and runs the streaming algorithm on this input. She then communicates the state of the streaming algorithm to Bob. Bob deletes a few intervals and then queries the algorithm for the current maximum independent set. Based on the output, Bob can determine the value of the ith bit in Alice's input. If the corresponding streaming algorithm was indeed a 2 minus epsilon approximation. Since this protocol computes a solution to the augmented indexing problem, the space used by the streaming algorithm must be omega n. Okay, we now switch gears a bit and consider the MIS problem for unit weight disks. For intuition, we begin by analyzing the greedy algorithm for insertion-only streams. We observe that the greedy algorithm yields a five approximation in insertion-only streams. To see this, we note that the five disks on the circumference are mutually disjoint but intersect the disk in the middle. However, a sixth such disk does not fit. It is easy to see that this yields a five approximation in insertion only streams, while such a greedy algorithm would not work in turn style streams. The question then is can we get a turn style stream algorithm? that potentially beats the greedy approximation ratio. So instead, we consider a hexagonal packing of the plane as seen here. We partition the packing into four equivalence classes as follows. Observe that any pair of disks that lie in the same equivalence class must be disjoint. Therefore, at least one of the classes has one fourth of the maximum independent set. Finally, recall that a hexagonal packing covers a pi over square root 12 fraction of the plane. So using a hexagonal grid, randomly shifting it, partitioning it into weight classes, and doing L0 estimation yields a 8 square root 3 over pi approximation in turn style streams. Note that this beats the greedy algorithm. I'll conclude with some open questions and future work. The complexity of arbitrary length intervals in turn style streams is still open. We give algorithms for special cases of these problems in our paper. Closing the gap in the approximation ratio for disks is an outstanding open problem. Future directions include studying MIS of objects such as rectangles in the streaming model and obtaining dimension independent approximation ratios for objects in high dimension. There is also an intriguing connection between packing constants and approximation ratios that would be great to explore further. Thank you for your attention.